Good morning. If you get your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, to the 51st number of Psalm. I made it. By the grace of God. Thank you. The The thing about it is, Sister Sherry, the good thing about it, because I want you to know something. God's been good to every one of us. But the good thing about it is, is when you can acknowledge it. It's a good thing when you know that God's been good to you. Because it's not just a few. God's been good to every one of us. But you hear me tell me, when you know for yourself that if it had not been, for the Lord who was on my side. It wasn't the money I had. It, it wasn't the education I had. But it was the Lord that made a way. You know, we sang the song for a long time. Say, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Then we caught the refrain and we said that uh, I once was blind. But now I see. But you know, Sister Linda Patterson, I know now what I was blind to. I was blind to God's grace. You see, because so many good things can happen to you that you start thinking it's you. But you know what? God will bless you, but he first will embarrass you. And God will allow you to get low enough where you realize that you don't have strength to help yourself. And when you come out of that trial, you don't come out of that trial with your, with your chest stick stuck out. You don't come out of that trial talking about what you did. But you come out of that trial talking about it was the Lord who brought me out when I had no strength. The Lord took me by my hand and walked me through it. No wonder Dr. Watt caught the refrain and said, Long as I live, while trouble rise, I'll hasten to his... Thank you, Jesus. Paul said that you should desire the office of a bishop yeah. as an overseer. That's a good thing. He said, but don't, don't let a novice be. Don't, don't let a person that just started trying to lead folk. You got some trials and some tribulation. You got some falling, some tripping. Some, you got some things you got to go through before you are able to lead people. Thank you, Jesus. It's a few of us, Brother Shade, that we can tell the Lord, Lord, thank you. And we ain't talking about thank you just for all good things. I can thank the Lord this morning for trouble in my marriage. Because I learned how to love my wife. Not by the honeymoon. But I learned how to love her through my mistakes and through my transgressions. Thank you, Jesus. You see, nobody's faithful but God. See, that's one reason we can't get no help at church because we, we start with the wrong premise. We come to church thinking it's going to make us something. But, but, but you see, the thing about it is you come to church to find out who God is. Not who you are. It, it, you, it ought to be apparent who you are. If you can get honest about your life, you can see who you are. But we come to church to find out about who God is. We've been in a lesson, we've been in a series of messages on uh, Life 101. Right. We thank the Lord for that series. God has turned the corner. Amen. And we want to start a series this morning on the faithfulness of God. Right. The faithfulness of God. You see, as you walk with the Lord, you begin to see just how faithful that he is. Yeah. Uh, you begin to see how that the Lord, no matter what you go through, when you acknowledge his presence. Have you ever looked back, Mother Bland, and said, you know what? He was there. You too? He was there all the time. It's hard to see him sometimes in the darkness. It's hard to see him sometimes when you're tripping and falling. It's hard to see him sometimes when it looks like tragedy is on every hand. But as you get down, Mother Brewer, farther on down the road, you begin to realize 
when I got on drugs, when, when I messed up, when I went to jail, when I transgressed, he was there. Oh, we're going to talk about the faithfulness. Is that all right? We don't want to talk about the faithfulness of the pastor. We, we, we don't want to talk about the faithfulness of you. We, we want to talk about the faithfulness of God. That all right? The 51st number of Psalm. 51st number. Here David, after his transgression with Bathsheba, takes his pen and begins to write. You see, you'll know the Lord as you go on to know him. You ought to know the Lord better today than you did know him. You see, when you walk with people, you get to know them a little better. As you talk with them, as y'all, you get to know them better. And so, I know that God saves you by his grace, through faith, that not of yourself. It has nothing to do with you, Gene. But you see, even though you're saved, and you ain't going to never be no more saved than you are when you're saved. Even though you're saved. You have to, the Bible says that we get to know him as we walk with him and we begin to walk worthy of the vocation yes, wherewith we are called. And, and, and then we have to be transformed. Yes, That's the reason it's so important to be here this morning. Yes. Because you see, my mind needs transformed. Yes, and, and the Bible says, it said, be ye transformed yes. by the renewing of your mind. Because God said at one place, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. So my mind has to be transformed by the renewing of my mind and not to be conformed to this world system. So David here, in the infancy of his relationship with God, you see, God took him from nothing and made him a king. You see, that's the reason it don't surprise me today what God does for me. Amen. I don't pay no attention to Nick Rose. Nick Rose think you ain't never supposed to have nothing. You better get your eyes off of them. Let me tell you something. All these folks that you think that are important, you just as important as they are. Anything anybody else wear, anything anybody else drive, anything anybody else have, you can have it too. God is no respecter of persons. But it's according to your faith. It's according to what you believe. But when you realize that your life is in God's hand, your life ain't in nobody else's hand. Reed, I'm glad to be here in Manasseh because they, they used to be the pastor thought your life was in his hand. You couldn't have no better relationship with God than what he said that you could have. But I found out one day that there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. And so like the old saints used to say, Mother Brewer said, if you can't help me, move out of my way. Move out of my way. Jesus said at one time when he came here, because any time that you're getting trying to spiritually grow, you're getting ready to run up against a, a bunch of opposition. And that's the reason you have to set your head as flint and don't worry about it. Don't look to the left, not to the right. And Jesus told him, he said, you think I'm coming to bring peace. But I come to bring various. This what I got right here, Mother Nun, is going to turn mother against daughter, father against. And then he said, if any man love his family more than he loved me, he's not worthy to be my disciple. He went on further to say that the kingdom of God suffereth violence. Suffer just an old English word for allows. God allows violence. God ain't got no coward soldier. God ain't got no jelly back folk. You scared about what folk gonna say about you. You won't take a stand for God. Oh, you so holy while you up in church, but once that you get on your job, don't nobody even know you know God. But God said that the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by four. I got about three or four mamas here that have said, baby, if I hadn't have been violent, my family wouldn't have stayed together. I had to stand against everybody. I got about three or four mothers here that said, baby, baby, I had to stand against my family in order to hold my family against me. Because folks was here, you talking about some honey, they ain't no good, you ought to leave them. And you leave your folks and then you out there by yourself. You got to fight for what you want. Ain't nothing coming easy. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, I'll fight for mine. Don't say it if you don't mean it now. 
I'll fight for mine. And you can take the fight the way you want to take it. I promise you, I'll fight for mine. David says here in Psalm 51, come on, walk with me. He asks God here, he says, have mercy upon me. Realizing how good that God had been to him. When his daddy didn't think nothing of him. When his daddy thought more of his brothers than he thought of him. Samuel comes down there looking for a king. They looked over him. I'm so glad that I read my Bible, Brother Alex, and I understand my Bible. That just because man look over you don't mean you looked over. What it means is, is that when I come into my blessing, I don't have no man to thank for it. What it means when I begin to walk in my blessing, I can turn around and say, it's the Lord's doing. I got about two or three witnesses that said, Pastor, I'm going to tell you what, I couldn't find nobody to help me. I couldn't find nobody to help me. And one morning, I looked to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help come from the Lord. They told you you couldn't live in that house. They told you that your children couldn't go to that school. Thank you, Jesus. I look to the hills from which come all of my help come from the Lord. And the good thing about it, Mother, is that when the Lord helped you, you don't come out bitter. They don't understand how come you don't hate them. They don't understand how come that you ain't mad at them. But you said, baby, I can do just like Joseph told his brothers. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. If you hadn't mistreated me, if you hadn't mistreated me, set me aside, made me feel like nothing, I wouldn't be the person that I am now. And so I'm very sure that no matter where I meet person, whether you got an education or don't have an education, whether you got money or don't have money, I know how to treat everybody because I know what it feels like in order for somebody to put you down. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You don't have nothing to fear for me. I'm all right. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody sang a song. They said, Joy Bells keep ringing in my soul. I'm so glad that I don't need no crowd of folks around me in order for me to feel God. I'm so glad I don't need the organ. I don't need the preacher to tune up in order for me to know that God is real. How you say that? Because I can feel him moving deep down. It's all by myself. Clapping go to going in my hand. My feet get to running. All I got to do is think back in my mind. We want to talk about the faithfulness of God. David knew that God had been good to him. But you see, somewhere down the line, God deals with us, Brother Jeff, it's a paradox. When we put beside God's faithfulness, our unfaithfulness, uh, if we don't hold on to the word of God, we'll faint out. It's a paradox. Somewhere down the line, you have to grasp the temporariness or the temporalness of your existence as contrasted with the eternity of God. I'll make that plainer, Pastor. Well, if you don't accept the fact that you are just a pilgrim and a traveler, if you don't take the old saint's uh, admonition, wear this world like a loose garment. Because it ain't many steps down the road you're going to have to pull it off. And so when you realize that whatever you're going to do, you need to do it now. If you're going to tell somebody you love them, don't wait till tomorrow, baby. If you're going to engraft them, if you're going to put your arms around somebody, don't wait until they act better. T today, while it is called day, Jesus said there's only so many hours in the day. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day. In the army, we call it carpe diem. Seize the day. The faithfulness of God. And so David realized that I done messed up. While everybody else was gone off the wall, I let my eyes go to Rome. And you know, I begged men here to come to the men meet. I guess you think I want to see you. Thank you, Jesus. But the reason I ask you to come to the men's meeting is so you learn how to turn it down. I don't care. This is grown folk. They ain't going to stop offering it. You got to learn how to take it down. 
Because ain't let me tell you something. Anytime you didn't conquer the woman, right. unless you raped her. If you didn't rape her, it wasn't your idea. That's for free right there. Boy, I'm telling you what you preaching. Playing is you preaching, boy. Thank you, Jesus. I just dropped some truth on you that you got you can marinate on that all the rest of the week. So I want you to come to me and me where we can come get together so you can get a strategy to turn it down. Because it's coming around the bend. The better job you got, ooh, y'all don't like the truth. You wearing all that nice smelling cologne and pretty shoes and everything. Think you ain't going to attract nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Talking about the faithfulness of God. We ain't talking about the faithfulness of man. We talking about the faithfulness of God. And so they would tell us that if God bless us, then we act right. But that's a lie. It looked like the more God bless us, the more foolish we want to act. Say, bro, it looked like some of the folks that got the most money and, and got the most stuff this world got to offer ain't got no time for God. So then we can't say because God bless you, that's going to make you act right. We need to throw that out right now. It's going to take something else to help us besides being blessed. Because David was the king over Israel. He had nobody to answer to. God had exalted him. God took him from being a keeper of the sheep. An old ruddy boy. Everybody looked over him. But when that man looked over him, God picked him out. He said, that's the one that I'm going to use. But you see, he was a man after God's own heart. Mother Nun, I'm so glad in my unfaithfulness that God gave me a heart, Sister Boots. That when God show me I'm wrong, when God shine the light, do you know that folks can see they wrong and won't turn? Do you know that folks' heart can be so uncircumcised and so stiff-necked that they know they're wrong, but they want to get mad at you instead of turning around and say, Lord, it's me. It ain't my brother. It ain't my sister. But it's me standing in the need of prayer. I need your grace. I can't stand up to this right here. I feel so sorry for people that be preaching. And be talking about how to walk, they this and they that, and talking about you got to do this and you got to do that. And they can't stand up to it, and I can't either. <laughs> they blind to God's grace. <laughs> God ain't going to let you do it. God ain't going to let you do it because if you do it, then you have something to brag about. And I want you to know that God made this world without your help or my help. <laughs> God, God made everything that's in it and he's keeping everything going without your help or my help. And so the only person left that's, that's going to brag is God. Thank you, Jesus. So now, David, even though he's the king, he's looking for something beside grace. He's looking for mercy. Have you, ever, have you ever looked? Let me just go on, dog. I don't got the preaching and everything. I'm halfway through. Let me just take my subject now. Don't even look at your neighbor. Don't look at your neighbor. Uh, just repeat after me this short subject. Say, I don't want, I don't want to, lose to lose your love. I don't want to lose your love. Y'all don't like that subject. That's okay. I promise you it's important because it deals with faithfulness. You see, because if you've ever been in love, your greatest fear was the one that you love wouldn't love you one day. And the thing about it, Mother Brew, I can talk to you. Uh, the thing about it is, is that we don't always act the way we ought to act. We don't always act lovely. And so sometimes we do things that would make people not love us. And so, Brother Davis, let me shake your hand. He said, so, Brother Davis, so we have this fear that, Lord, have mercy. Don't let me do nothing that will make them not love me no more. Maybe you never, I'm like Lenny Williams. Maybe you never been in love before. 
Look like I'm looking at a lot of hard-hearted folk that ain't never. But the, the, the Dramatics, boy, they had a song out. I, it was bad grammar, but it, it hit. He said, uh-uh, look like I have failed for you. It was a long time before I realized, now, shouldn't that have been fallen? Let me tell you, when you slip, trip, and fall in love. Lady the devil, what, I've been with you 42 years. I wasn't doing nothing but trying to have a little fun. Thank you, Jesus. You mess around, can't get loose. I'm talking about love now. And when you're in love, and what you need to realize here, because you're in love don't mean you're going to act right. And your acting wrong is what messed you up because you said, Lord, have mercy. This right here is going to mess around and make me lose my boo with this foolishness. And so that's the reason that David, because David loved the Lord. I ain't talking to everybody, Sister Brewer. I'm talking about two or three folk that love God, but they can't walk straight to save their life. I'm talking about folk that love God, but look like every time they keep messing up. Every time that I said, God, I ain't going to do it no more, I find myself doing the same. That's who I'm talking to this morning. But I'm talking about the faithfulness of God. And so David asked the Lord, he said, Lord, have mercy on me. You see, mercy is when, when God, when you don't get something that you do deserve. See, it's a few of us that's well acquainted with mercy because we should have been cut off. We should have been shut out. But what God did, Kathy, God came for about two or three of us and covered our tracks. You see, as much as folk know about us, I promise you they don't know it all. I promise you they don't know just. I'm at the right place this morning. Because I come this morning not to talk about the faithfulness of no man. But I come to talk about the faithfulness of my God. I'm so glad I got a God that won't leave me, not forsake me. I'm so glad I got a God that no matter how far down in the ditch I get, that my God will roll up his pants legs and come down and get. I'm so glad I don't have no Sunday school God. I'm so glad I ain't got no church of God in Christ God. I'm so glad I ain't got no Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian God. But I got a God that before I ever got here, he loved me so much that he left heaven, came down and died on my behalf. What you say, mother? We were doing a lot better. We were doing a lot better, Patricia, when we were singing that in the morning. I'm second grade down in Elaine, Arkansas, a little nappy head red boy. And every morning, Miss Hampton would have us sing before we ever get in school, before we ever start math or English. We sang a song that said, Yes. Thank you. Can you make it when you know he loved you? When you know he loved you, can you make it? No matter how hard life gets, if I just. If I just know I'm still under his love, I know I done messed up. I know I ain't no good. But if I can just have the assurance, I know I got to suffer some things. I know that I got some hard knocks to hit. But if I just, if I just know I'm still in your love, if I know I'm still in your hand, I know I can make it talking about the faithfulness of God. Uh, I don't want to lose your love. I understand there's some things I got to go through. But the only thing I'm telling you, God, is I don't want to lose your love. I know I've not acted like I should have. I joined with Paul in Romans the seventh chapter when Paul says, when I seek to do good, evil is present with me. And see, see, I'm at the right place this morning. See, Skeeter, because some of these church folks act like they don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they act like they don't know what they're talking about. But let me just tell you, I'm the pastor. I ain't asking y'all. We ain't taking no offering, so you ain't got nothing to worry about. We ain't asking for nothing. Everything is paid for already here. We, we all right. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But let me tell you something. I like wrong. <laughs> if, if I didn't like it, then I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I like doing wrong. And so in order to keep me out of wrong, I need the love and the faithfulness of God. Not my will, but thy will be done. 
but I know I can't do it alone. Right. Y'all messed me up in church, Kathy, because y'all told me, say, if you do right, then the Lord will bless you. Well, what, what, what's going to happen to me when I don't do right? Because I'm doing wrong more than I'm doing right. And so I'm so glad to be in this series about the faithfulness of God. Y'all so they quit lying on God. Because God ain't like me. God don't walk away. The closest thing we got to God's love is mama's love. Oh, yeah. I don't know how many mamas did I know see walk up to the jail. Now, he had no time for mama. He'd been running around with Jabbo and, and Poon Jang and, and the Juju and all of them. That, them be his partners. But when you go to jail, ain't none of them coming. When, when you go to jail, that's when mama coming up there. Uh huh. Every dime she got cricket is right here in her bosom. And I'm going to tell you what, if she got it, she going to give it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to take a long time for daddy to come. Okay? Because what daddy going to say is, I told him. Uh huh. Mama just going to hold her head down because she don't want to talk too much because she's still hoping that you're going to give her that money. So she can get her baby. I'm talking about love. I'm talking about a faithful love. I'm talking about a love that goes past me. I don't need nobody to love me according to me. I need a redeeming love. I need a love that'll look past every one of my faults. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. You, you ask me why? I'm going to tell y'all the truth now. I'm going to tell you what. My dad is up there and looked like he's coming to the end and everything, and I hate it and everything, but I'm going to tell y'all the truth. I done thought of many times is I'm so sure glad that ain't my mama. Ooh, look how y'all looking at me. I'm that preacher. I can tell the truth. I can tell the truth. I can tell the truth. Now, don't think I don't love my dad. I love him, but it's just the truth. Because I'm going to tell you something. It's something when somebody ain't never turned their back on you. It's something when somebody been there every time. I ain't talking about every now and then. But I'm talking about every time that you look around. They right there. The faithfulness of God. Lord, we're going to pull the cover off the devil. You know? Because you see, the devil want to tell us huh, that if we do this and we don't do that, then God going to walk off and leave him. But the devil is a lie. He said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. David says here, have mercy. Have mercy on me, Lord. I don't deserve nothing. See, you, it's, you got to get honest with God and quit fronting. I, that's another reason I'm glad I'm here and everything because I ain't got to play with God. See, because God ain't nothing to play with. All my little religious activities and coming up with my little canned prayers and God, this is your servant's prayer and Lord, you know I haven't done it all that night. I ain't got no time for that. I just want to holler out and say, Lord, help me. I ain't trying to fix nothing up for you. I'm trying to get some help. Thank you, Jesus. He said, have mercy upon me. And then he says, because he knows the Lord, he tells him the source of his mercy. He says, according to thy loving kindness. You see, the Lord told Israel, he said, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. You see, wonder, Israel got messed up when they wanted to go on their own. God brought them through the Red Sea yes. through his grace. They didn't have no boats. They didn't, couldn't swim that far. God opened up and made a way and took them across. Then when they got on the other side, he asked them, can you make it now? They said, yeah, we can make it. He said, well, these are the rules. No lying, no adultery. Can you do that? Yes, we can do it. But you see, when you're blind to your own self, when you don't realize that God, if you don't help me, I'm, I'm preaching right now. I don't know what y'all waiting on. If you don't help me, I'm not going to be able to stand the storm. And so my hat's off to all you strong folk. All you people that got it together. All of y'all that don't never get mad enough to cuss. All of y'all don't do nothing wrong. My hat is off to you. But to the rest of us. To the rest of us, we come here this morning to say, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, God, how faithful that you 
all the days of my life. He said, according to thy tender mercy, your loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I'm going down to verse 5. He says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin. Did my mother conceive me? Uh huh. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part and the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Then he says here in verse 7. Now realize this is David's understanding at this time. He says, Purge me with hyssop. I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast not away me, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12. Y'all still with me? Restore unto me. You see, your joy is in direct proportion to your faith. When you don't know the faithfulness of God, when you think God's faithfulness is dependent on you, it's hard for you to have joy. But, but, but you see, let me go back to mother's love. I don't care what, I, I've been in jail. I've been knocked in the head. They had to come up there. To, I've both been in school. They got to come up there. I'm up there looking like I'm Asian. The man that hit me in the head with a billy club because I was so drunk and everything. I'm thinking I'm the police. I'm going to arrest him. That's me. That's all. Oh yeah, I'm that kind of drunk. When I get drunk, I pull the police over. I wouldn't stand up here with this microphone and lie. But my brother, all I had to do was make one phone call. I didn't call you. I called that woman right there. And when I called her, she accepted the call. And as soon as they could get up here. Now my dad probably didn't want to go, but she told me, she said, you gotta get out of that bed if you want to stay with me. If you want to stay with me, we're going to sleep out my child. When they got up there, I didn't look like they child. My head was all swollen up. When they got up there, the folk were talking about me and everything. They, I'm gonna, we going to put them out of school. They, they, they listened to all that. So come on, baby. Get on into me. One few days later, she had got me in somebody else's school. I go to the, the faith, what I'm talking about is, is that I got a God on my side, Sister Linda Patterson, that no matter how bad I mess up, he ain't no God of a second chance. But he keep giving me chance after chance after chance. God keep making ways for me. God keep opening doors. That's the reason that Paul says in Ephesians, he tells us as saints of God, after our mind become renewed, he says, look here, be kind, be kind tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. How is it that God can look past all of your transgression? God can look past all of your foolishness, and you get mad when somebody cut in front of you in the... Thank you, Jesus. It's just the first message. We're we, we getting there. He says, he says here, uh, create and renew a right spirit. Look what he says. He, don't, don't, he said, verse 11, he said, cast me not away from thy presence. See, you have to understand, this was David's understanding then. He said, don't take my, don't, don't throw me away from your presence. I'm still talking to folks that know what it is to be in love. I, I know some of y'all so cold hearted you ain't never been there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But if you ever been in love, that's your worst nightmare. That you ain't gonna be able to be with them no more. Uh-huh. I thought I wanted a coat. 
till I thought that that lady devil was cold. Now I didn't want to talk to that woman no more. <laughs> I'm that preacher. One of my friends, Maurice Hopkins, he came to me and talked to me. He said, man, he said, the people talking. He said, they up looking good, man. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, no. <laughs> you're running and you're grinning. <laughs> but I want you to know, sir, ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. <laughs> Talking about the faithfulness of God. I don't want to lose your love. I promise you that I don't. Look what he says here. He said, cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. You see, Mother Brewer, when you get used to walking and talking with the Lord, when you get used to his presence, life get hard for all of us, y'all. So, so sometimes we have to hear some hard things. Sometimes we have to deal with some hard things. And people that we have loved and people that, that we have trusted will turn around and put, they'll put knives in our back. Yes. Yes. But do I have a witness? Yes. Uh, even in them times, Valentine Junior, if you can just get down on your knees. All right. All right. If you can stay down there till you feel his presence. You can stay down there. The old saints used to get to clapping their hands and say, come in, Lord. Bless. Touch. Deliver. Come in, Lord. You stay there long enough that all of a sudden your hands get to shaking. All of a sudden you feel your joy coming back. All of a sudden now you get running in your feet, clapping in your hands. Brother Habersham, you get up. Things ain't changed, but you done change. You get up like Jesus when he walked back and they were still sleeping. And he told them, said, sleep on, because I don't got in my father's will. I don't want to lose your love. Long as I know that you love me. I don't care come hell or high water. Long as I know you love me. How do you think me and Lady Devon have stayed together all these years? It was the Lord's presence. Baby, I was there at Russ College yesterday, and the guy was talking to me and everything and, and whatever, and I said something about you. He said, I didn't mean to ask that. You know, they called her back then. They called her Code 44. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, your children didn't even know that. That's all right, the Code 44 hooked me. Thank you, Jesus. I know why they call you Code 44. I done got off my message now. But he, he said, I mean to ask you that. Is you and 44 still together? I said, yeah, man. I said, we've married 37 years. I took out my phone. I showed this is my family right here. This is my son. He practiced law with me, and that's right here, teacher at the federal prison and everything. I looked around. I was talking to myself. He had walked off. <laughs> Glory to God. I want you to know that God is faithful. I want you to know that my God is faithful. You got to have the joy yourself. You sit around waiting for folks to be happy for you. Ain't nobody happy for you. Ain't nobody happy for you. We didn't get nearly as far as I thought. That's okay. Turn over to Romans 4 real quick. Yeah. This is when David had grown a little bit. See, you don't have to ask God. Don't take his presence from you. Because see, you're, you're his bone and his body. See, you, you understand that, that nothing shall be able to separate me. You see, but you have to get that understanding. You see, it's according to your understanding. Yeah. Right. Remember when Jesus told them, he said, be it unto you according to your faith. Yeah. 
See, I, I don't have to walk around. I don't be asking God, tell me that God forgive me. God, God forgave me 2,000 years ago. <laughs> he made payment for my sin 2,000 years ago. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't been asking him to forgive me. What I'm going to ask him is, Lord, help me don't do that no more. God, I don't like that. That's embarrassing. God, that brings shame on my family. Help, help me not to do that. But as far as the forgiveness, the forgiveness has been taken care of. You see, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. There's no remission of sin. That's the Bible. You're, you're standing up snotting and crying, talking about I ain't going to the club no more. I ain't going to do that. That don't get no forgiveness. That's you talking, cause, and you're lying. Why are you doing because I'm dependent upon his grace. I'm, I'm, I'm dependent upon his grace. Every night I can't listen to everybody preaching and everything because you're preaching a lie. Ain't none of us going to get so strong we don't do nothing wrong. And you, that just ain't going to happen. And so I need God's grace in order for me to be in right standing with God. It, it, it's it's going to take something beside me. Look, look, look what David says. I'm in Romans, the fourth chapter. I promise you, I'm almost through. Let me get over here. Let y'all go. It's been a good day. Yeah. Romans 4. Uh, look, what, look what David says. Uh, let me just take a run and start. Get that. He said, what shall we say then that Abraham, I'm in first verse, that Abraham our father has returned to the flesh have found. You see, there's two stories in the Bible. One is the story of Israel and the other is the story of the church. Would you have some time to read them and figure out? That's what Paul meant to Timothy. He said, Timothy, study. Don't worry about raising offerings. Don't worry about ministries. He said, but you study. You study. Me studying filled this church up, y'all. It wasn't no strategy or nothing. Folks will come when you got something to say. Yeah. Ain't that advertisement? We got enough advertisement coming. You ain't talking about nothing. You got to have a swan and quintet up here to hold me. I came for the word of God. He says, for if Abraham were justified by his works, he hath where of the glory, but not before God. You see, Cherry, God is, is not going to share his glory with anybody. And so God's going to keep you weak. God's going to keep you defeated so that he, you have to come to him. I'm so glad the day that I came to him. I had to come to him while I was saved. Because you church folks had told me, said, you don't need God no more. Now you saved. Now all you got to do is walk upright. But I would walk for a while and I'd fall for a while. And the thing about it is that when you get saved, you don't like sin. If you ain't saved, it don't bother you one bit. But if you get saved, it just don't go with you. It's just like when you get a piece of automobile. Where you used to walk all the way over town. We call it over town. Y'all don't know about that. You used to walk all the way to Helena. Now you won't even walk down the block. Because you got used to riding. Thank you, Jesus. He says... For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. He got in favor with God by believing God, not by what he did. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. His faith made it, he believed with his heart and God counted it as righteousness. I'm, I'm almost through. Give me three verses. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckon of grace, but of debt. So then, if you can stand up and be faithful on your own, you don't owe God nothing. God owe you. And who you think you are that God going to owe you something? You can't hardly make a cabinet, less more a world. He says, look at verse 5. Give me two more verses, y'all. But to him that worketh not, isn't that contrary to everything they taught us in church? But he said, but to him that worketh not, Leave it alone. Take your hand off of it. I got this. I can take care of you. I can make you what you never could make yourself. I want you to know something today. My wife got a good husband. I promise you do. She got a good husband. I don't care what you think about it. She knows she do. But I couldn't do it on my own. God had to do it. I went to the movies the other night, Tammy, and I watched this movie, what, uh, Almost Christmas? I cried all the way through the movie. When you watch it, you'll know why. Because that man loved his wife. And I'll tell you this right here. This the Bible said, but I'm going to say it. Husband, love your wife. You find you somebody, I'm going to tell you what, ain't nobody like your wife. You're looking at everybody else. But I promise you that God put y'all together for a reason. And until you start loving your wife, you won't be fulfilled and she won't either. 
That's for free now. Look what the Bible says. Oh, I got one more verse. He said, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Brother Shea Sims, God just wants to be believed. God don't need you to do nothing but believe him. Because he has everything already, Sister Bugs, and all he needs. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. Get somewhere and study God's word. Know God's word for yourself. And once you know God's word, then take God at his word. And watch God change your life. Not because of what you did. Because God, Skeeter, God is faithful with his word. Jeremiah said that he will watch over his word to perform it. And he won't let his word come back to him void. And so, Sister Brenda, anything God ever did for anybody else. You're looking at a bona fide crack addict up here. Just like I'm holding a pipe, just like I'm holding this uh, microphone, I used to hold a crack pipe. But God took the crack pipe out of my mouth and God put a microphone in my mouth to tell about his goodness and how faithful that he is. And ain't shame of it. Can take it and do whatever you want to do about it. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you, the Bible said, make known my deeds among the people. And if God have done something for you. His faith is counted for righteousness. Last verse. Thank y'all for your patience. The Bible said, even as David. Now, see, this is when, Sister Willow, this is when David grew up. You see, you get saved, but you have to learn the faithfulness of God because you think it's on you. And David is asking him, said, Lord, don't take your presence. Don't take your spirit. Don't take your, but you see, the thing about it is, is we're temporal, but God is eternal. Yes, yes, yes. And you see, Brother Bird, what I, what I didn't know was, was that before God ever looked past all them good looking folks, and went and got that little ruddy boy. He knew, mother, that David was going to stand on that balcony and he was going to go and lay with Bathsheba. But what I love, Sister Karufi, is that he chose him anyway. Sometimes I sit back and I cry when I think, Lord, why did you have mercy on me? Lord, why did you look past all? Lord, why? Why you choose me, God? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You see, Sister Sherry, David was thinking back in the 51st Psalm, he thought it had something to do with him. But by the time we get over here in Romans 4, look what David says. David says in verse 6, even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. You see, Cricket, God, the Bible says that God came down, took on flesh, hung on a rugged cross, died in my place and he did that brother Habersham the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 he that knew no sin I'm talking about the faithfulness of God that, that God created man and through one man sin entered into the world but Romans 5 and 19 said by one man righteousness came into the world he that knew no sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. And so now because of God's faithfulness, it's not about my faithfulness, but it's about his faithfulness. And because I am in his body and because I'm his bone and his flesh, he took my sin and he gave me his righteousness. Clap your hands for the Lord.